Hello and welcome everybody. Josh, the RV nerd with Bish's RV down here in Middlebury, Indiana today. Got away from my Coldwater, Michigan hometown store to get you a full production look at one of the new Transcend One uh, single axle series bunkhouse family camping models right here. Now, if you don't like the bunks, don't worry. Uh, they make one that's just a rear bath for solo or couples camping. But if you need a little bit of extra sleeping space, this one right here is going to be your Huckleberry. There's a couple key points of difference in execution in this that I think helps separate it. And I want to focus on those today. First of all, their warranty. They have stepped up to uh, offer a one uh, year warranty plus three year structural plus five year frame warranty that is transferable to subsequent owners. And that's an exceptionally strong stance to come from a manufacturer. Now this RV, speaking of the frame, it's not riding on a traditional Lippert I-beam frame. It's on a Norco huck to chassis. They also opted to go a full eight foot wide, which really opens up some breathing room where if you are stuck inside in one of these things on a rainy day, it's the extra, potentially up to a foot of additional space that really makes a big difference here. They did shrink the bunks. These are only like 67 inch bunks. They're a little over five feet, but bunks are made for little kids anyway. If you need more than that, then a, a small bunkhouse probably wouldn't work regardless. But what that did is it allowed them to go with a bigger sofa and they included like a floating picnic table with it. You could use inside or outside. This also has a 60 by 80 true queen bed up front, which is deceptive when you look at it. It looks like a short queen like everything else, but you forget that this is an eight foot wide camper. The Underbellies enclosed and forced air heated, which is exceptionally uncommon in this size and class. They have solar package options, inverter prep, a docking station, and a bunch of other cool things. And a couple little hitches in the giddy up too. We're going to talk about the good, the bad, the ugly with everything in between. And if you appreciate that fair approach, hit that subscribe button. Let's see what she has to offer. Now, for the most part, this is a floor plan that you've generally kind of seen in some variation, one or another from different manufacturers. But again, there's a couple real key differentiating details here like i like the fact that it, it, this is a 60 by 80 true queen bed that is just a normal residential size queen that very few stick and tin single axle campers have frankly a lot of tandem axle stick and tins don't have a true queen bed now they just left that pocket open for storage whether it's duffel bags or totes or you know what i thought cat litter box um my household we've uh, we've been a one dog household for a while and um, somebody dropped a cat off uh, at my parents' place, kind of outside of town. And we decided to expand our little fur baby family a little bit. So that's one of those things that's funny. As soon as I got a cat, I walked into this RV and I'm like, where would I put a cat litter box? It, I, it's just, it's funny how you change so fast. Like, I remember before we had a kid, um, I would hear some kind of screaming kid at Walmart and it would just grind my gears. And then the day that we decided like, hey, we think we're ready to try to start being parents, something shifted inside of me. And like, I saw a baby sitting in like the little grocery cart carrier, you know, at the store. And I started smiling. And I was like, what happened to me? I'm not, I'm not like Scrooge anymore. I'm actually like, I think that's really cute. And it's just funny. Things, just the way that you change over time. I don't know. Um, you know, I've talked a lot about stuff you probably don't care about. You don't care about my cat. Anyway, um, I like the kind of, it's not canister lights, but it, it's canister style lighting. It gives us a very nice look uh, in here. Um, this is also all pocket screwed cabinetry. The cabinets are not held together by staples in your imagination. <laughs> now up front here, again, just a true queen bed. Now the power outlets are at kind of the foot of the bed, which sort of, it seems a little bit irksome, but then you remember they could kind of split some duty with the uh, the sofa. The good news is they also put outlets right over here by the headboard area. And I don't think this is the kind of camper most people are buying so they can sit inside and watch TV. But if it is going to be a rainy day and you're stuck indoors where they have the TV hookups, I think it's a really good, really smart location. And there are very few areas where I really criticize and critique this camper. One of the only things I don't really like about it myself is just the fact that that's a big, giant open pocket above the bed. I prefer closed off storage. But the fact is you can go to, I don't know, Target or whatever home goods store you like. You've got about a one inch 
uh, lip right there. You could get some kind of like wicker totes or something like that to kind of close that off. And you know what? It would probably be just fine. It's just not necessarily my personal preference. I do love the two-stage flip-flop shop they have over here. Having a place to shove some shoes right by the door to cut that clutter so you're not tripping over the stupid things. That, to me, is really, really smart content decision-making. Um, it's not like it's massive. But I do like, would you call it a head locker? Because it's not a foot locker, obviously. It's not at the foot of the bed. I, I guess it could be at the foot of the bed if you want to put your head the other side. But this feels more like the headboard area to me. Actually, no. Now that I say that, because of the location of the TV hookup, I would probably put my pillow over there. I think that that would likely make a little more sense. Now, earlier when our video first began, I gave you a very slow, very brief, super wide angle look at this thing. And I don't like doing that. I like to give you, like, here's how this thing actually looks to the naked eye, flat lensing like I'm doing right now. But it is kind of a small space, and I did want to give you an idea of how everything sort of lays out against one another. I do like, um, next to that thermostat, I do like how you have household and USB plugs there. They're in the middle of the wall, but it should be able to work for the top or bottom bunk, uh, you know, either way. The thing is, though, those are smaller bunks. They're only like 67 inches instead of 70, I think, 2 or 74 like a lot of bunks. But they did that so that you could get a bigger sofa here. And I kind of don't... I, I'm not mad. I'm not mad about it. Like, I, I don't like the idea of shrinking the bunks, but at the same time, the little kids that are going to sleep on those beds, they'd still fit on the same little bunks anyway. So, I don't know. What do you think about that? Uh, cracking open the overhead storage, I really respect the fact that they did maintain um, doors for the entire... So it's like three overhead doors, you know? Um, what a lot of brands will do on a, a small camper like this is they'll just do one door kind of in the middle of the cabinet, or they'll do a door left to door right and then a dead panel in the middle to save a couple bucks. And they didn't do that here. They really prioritized function first on this RV. Like the, the, the double drawers below the bunks, bunk houses rarely have enough storage for everybody. Um, and, and it's still, don't get me wrong, it's still limited. It's not like this is the best storage in the world I've ever seen in a little bunkhouse kind of camper, but it's, it's not terrible either. Um, what are the weight ratings on these? Is there a sticker? There is not. Okay. I'm going to see if I can try to locate the weight ratings later. I'd be shocked if it's anything less than 200 to 220 pounds on a small little single bunk like that. I think it'd probably be fine. Now a little trailer like this, carpetless, no vents in the flooring, kid-friendly, pet-friendly, spill-friendly. That's pretty standard uh, stuff, though. The converter box is nice and easy to get to. I do like that. That's to the right of the furnace over there. But the thing is here, what do you think about this? Instead of, uh, like, a, a giant refrigerator in a tiny camper, which is, don't get me wrong, big fridges are nice. I'm not ever knocking that. They went with, it looks like a college kid's sized, like, beer cooler fridge but it actually is a 12 volt compressor fridge and the bottom drawer can be a little freezer pocket if you need to but by going with that you still have a fast cooling fridge that runs during transit that opens up the counter space here normally this thing would have almost no functional counter space very few single axle campers have really good counter space like this one so we have an open space over here if you have coffee makers air fryers griddles all kinds of things including the handy little uh paper towel roller uh holder above that but still leaving overhead space for a microwave and decent overhead cabinetry actually let me give you a look at that let me open that up here i i think that that's kind of I don't know. I'm, I'm not mad about it. Like, I, I keep saying I'm not mad about stuff because some of the things they're doing here, they're not the, the current industry trendy way of doing it. They've kind of bucked some trends and they've really, you know, the, the kitchen arrangement that we're looking at here is kind of a classic kitchen. But by doing things like bringing a 12 volt fridge into the mix, I think that they've done some really smart things. Like, it doesn't have a propane oven. If you're looking for an oven, it's not going to have that. Did you notice, though, two dedicated uh, silverware drawers? A lot of little trailers have none. This vertical space there, though, is one of my only other nitpicks on this camper. The bottom section, there's like a water heater or something. I can't remember. But there's something down there. This top section, though, there is nothing directly behind that. 
I would love to see that even if it was an open pocket. I don't love open storage, but I'll take open storage over wasted storage any day of the week. But that's just my opinion. I don't know. What would you like to see done there? If anything, um, understanding anything that they do add starts adding extra money. This bathroom, though, by being a full eight foot wide, they were really able to make this fairly fluffy friendly. And I think they did a really good job of it. And it's not much. It's just a mirror on the wall. But it's not just a blank paneled wall and it's crazy how much life it breathes into this little room that is also a shower not a tub which some people like some people don't and they did a real smart thing here where they they shoved the vent fan up in the shower which is good because if they didn't do that i'm not sure that my head would have fit up into this space in here now obviously my head's up inside of that thing but I'm a little over six foot tall, and it's a six and a half foot tall floor to ceiling camper. That's a pretty normal standard thing. Um, I'm only going to be in that shower for a little bit, and then I'm going to be out, and I can deal with it. Um, but, I mean, overall, the things that they've accomplished here, what do you think so far? Another good aspect of these is that they're, you know, the smallest, lightest of the grain designs basically. So they're also the most affordable and most easily towed. Those are all some pretty nice features. Now it is still a full eight foot wide. So I do recommend towing extension mirrors, but I, I never don't recommend some variety of towing extension mirror. I'm not one of these people that believes on skimping on safety. It always blows me away. Somebody goes and buys a brand new expensive pickup truck to tow an RV around. Um, you know, they, they buy this, let's be real, an expensive RV to go spend their weekends and then $60 for towing extension mirrors or something like that. Well, they can be more depending on the type, but you get the idea. They're like, I don't know. Do I need them? I'm like, dude, you just put 80, 90, 120 grand on the road. Not to mention your own personal safety, like, you know, <laughs> protect that thing. So anyway, that's just my two cents. I really appreciate the fact they still maintain a full pass through here. Um, one of the other things that kind of took me by surprise is that motion lighting and the fact that they have it on both sides of the pass through. Obviously, it picked me up all the way over here. That is the kind of stuff that little single axle campers just very often do not include. And if we pass through over to the other side, they have their, it, it's simple, it's basic, but I guess you call it a universal docking station, but a dock, there, there's smoke detectors in this building uh, apparently need replacing. I keep hearing uh, detectors chirping at me. Anyway, that's in case you hear that chirping sound in the background, that's what that is. Let's talk um, chassis and warranty. So first of all, this rides on a little different chassis. This is not a traditional Lippert I-beam frame. This is a Norco chassis. It's huck bolted. Uh, it's like a, a Z frame kind of chassis. So it's a different supplier and it seems to be a very well respected system. Uh, in my experience, it tends to work pretty well and hold up pretty well. Now, Grand Design previously had a one year warranty plus three year structural coverage. They're really the brand, like if you look at a lot of RV manufacturers nowadays, if you weren't aware, a couple years ago, you either had mostly the RV industry had one year limited warranties, then occasionally you had a brand like Jayco with a two year warranty, it was exceptionally uncommon. Grand Design came in with their three year structural and it's like now everybody has a three year structural uh, because it was very popular. Well, they have kind of actually done two steps to their warranty enhancement recently. They have added a plus five year frame coverage. So that Norco chassis that we talked about and they decided to make all that retroactive and transferable. So let's say you have like a two or three year old uh, Grand Design Imagine, not even Transcend. You may not realize it, even if you're the second owner, you actually now have warranty coverage that you did not have before, automatically. It just automatically retroed. Uh, it's a very cool thing they did, and kind of like how the plus three aspect of the warranty caught on like wildfire in the industry, I, I bet what they're doing on their, their plus five and uh, transferable is also going to catch on. I'm not a, a big fan of outside speakers, but that is a decent one, albeit high mounted. Now, the thing is you look at it, it's like, yeah, but it's a single speaker. That's kind of stupid. It's actually not. It, it is a left and right speaker. Uh, it's just all mounted out of one location, which is kind of interesting. Um, if you look down below, uh, like just in front of that rear stabilizer, you'll actually see where this does have a gas grill quick connect, which is kind of cool. And it is prepped and ready for a telescopic removable ladder. It has a walkable roof. Something else it has that's not easy to discern from this footage 
is it has um, anti-scratch coating on all the uh, aluminum skin. So if you're you know, going through state parks or something and there's some tree branches hanging down, it's gonna be a lot harder, not impossible, but a lot harder for this thing to get some permanent scar factor going on with it. Uh, now, while you're checking out this little cargo space, uh, I wanna mention that the RV by default has no solar, no inverter but it's prepped for that stuff. If you want to, they have a 200 watt solar package, optional, kind of like just about everybody else, but they also pre-wire this RV for an inverter that would power all of the outlets up to a 2000 watt inverter before you need to start rewiring things. That is a very uncommon quality to find in a little trailer like this. So that's kind of the thing. Like at a glance, you, walk, you look at this, you go, yeah, it's kind of like everything else, but the more you peel through the onions layers, the more you start to see it does have some interesting qualities you don't normally find like the the receiver hitch on the back that's only a class two hitch meaning basically uh it's a bike rack you know kind of hitch it's not made for real heavy duty kind of stuff but the underbelly not only is it enclosed it is also forced air heated and stick and tin single axle campers i offhand i'm not really thinking of any others that also do that so that right there is a major difference factor if you want to do some extended season camping earlier spring later fall and i do like the new style of awning light that they've adopted here i think they call it the fusion light i call it the ahsoka tano uh lightsaber light because you know i'm a nerd by the way remember that table that we saw inside if it feels a little bit too cluttery you can always use it outdoors because lord only knows what's happened on the uh public park table before you got there but if you watch this video and you're like, yeah, but I have no use for bunks. They make one without bunks too. It's called the 151 RB instead of the 151 BH, just rear bath, pretty simple. I never thought about this, but handy little demo. I'm a little bit over six foot tall showing you the height of the entry door right here. I'm so used to Scrooge McDucking my way out of these. Actually, if you notice, I didn't even duck. When you start to step down the steps, my head clears. Uh, maybe. If Maybe it's because I have uh, less of a forehead, more of a five head, so my hair doesn't have to worry about it, but I can get out of that thing. Now, um, I'm going to leave you a bunch of links in the description. If I remember, I'll leave you one to the no bunk couples model over here. I'll leave you some links to other builders who have made similar layouts. I'll also leave you a link to our website where you can see where we have any of these parked and the MSRP on them. Um, Grand Design's advertising policies often restrict us from publishing our actual discounted sale price that we do offer every day. We don't sell these things at MSRP, but we're not always able to publish that on our website. We are absolutely able to give that figure to you, but by request. It's just one of the guidelines that we have to abide by. It's not my favorite policy, obviously. We also don't do hidden fees, which is one of my favorite policies I, I do like. Did you know we also have a 72-hour return policy? If you don't like your RV for any reason, bring it back. That's it. It's just that easy. Uh, I've seen it happen. Um, so when you're ready, we're ready. Our goal is to make this simple and easy and, God forbid, a little bit of fun going camping. So take care, stay safe, have fun, and happy camping, everyone.